Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you follow some of my videos, you know that I mentioned terms or concepts from domain-driven design. But I actually think you should stop doing domain-driven design and instead get the blue book, the domain-driven design book, skip everything at the starting, and jump to part four, strategic design. The reason I say stop doing domain-driven design is really what I'm referring to is what most people perceive as domain-driven design that they've really latched onto things like entities, value objects, repositories. But what I think is more important is what's in part four of that book, which relates to bounded context and context maps. So here's some statements or questions or comments that I constantly see on the internet that I think sway people in the wrong direction. So that DDD is only powerful when your business logic is complex. I think it's more useful to me when you have a larger system, complexity just inherently comes with that that you're supposed to use the repository pattern. There's so much arguing about the repository pattern. And this is proving my point about caring so much about these things and that you need to use factories to be creating in entities or value objects. That's how, what's what the book demonstrates. Or that if you have no logic in your entities, that's an anemic domain model, which is an anti-pattern. And while I can get behind this, it's only an anti-pattern, is if you think you're creating a rich domain model within your entities. If you're not doing that and you know you're not doing that, then it's not an anti-pattern. And you can't have dependencies within your domain model. While again, this is a good concept, especially if you're thinking about having your core have no dependencies in it, sometimes you actually need to, depending on what you're modeling. And things like double dispatch aren't the end of the world. How do I make an email address unique across aggregates? This one has probably been questioned, I don't know how many times. And again, just goes back to relating what I was just referring to. So am I doing DDD right? Are you doing DDD right? If you're concerned about those types of things that I just mentioned, no, I don't think you're doing DDD right. To me, doing DDD is about understanding your domain and modeling your domain, finding the boundaries. There's value in the patterns of aggregates, which again, form boundaries. There's value in those tactical patterns. There is, but that shouldn't be the focus, to, in my opinion, about when you're doing DDD. Just because you have repositories and entities and value objects, that means that you have those. That doesn't necessarily, to me, mean that you're doing DDD. Again, focusing on the domain, to me, and boundaries is the most important thing about doing DDD. So one of the great ways, in my opinion, to find boundaries within your system and to kind of define what a bounded context is, is through language. And I love this tweet by Mel Conway, even though that's not what he was talking about, is bounded context, but this is October 29, 2020, where he said, when a politician greets you with, how are you? and a nurse greets you with, how are you? They are totally different questions, even though they sound and are spelled the same. But really what this is describing is context. And that's what this slide I always use to kind of describe that is if I use the word crane without context, are you thinking about in construction a crane or are you thinking about a bird? Without any context, you have no idea what I'm referring to. But in a real world example, words do matter and the world of transportation that I'm in right now, let's say that we have the concept of a vehicle. Well, if you're talking about a vehicle to different people that interact with the system that you're building in that particular domain, well, there's different subdomains and bounded contexts within those. So somebody in recruitment, which is hiring people to drive the vehicles, they care about different things. They care about compliance and do you have the proper driver's license? Do you have insurance? and those types of um, types of things. But if you're talking about somebody's in operations that actually has to get freight moved from place A to place B, when they're talking about, say, a vehicle, they're not thinking of those compliance necessarily. They're more thinking about a vehicle in terms of, okay, it's on the way to a particular, particular pickup or it's on the way to a delivery for related manifests. So in different places, people care about different things. And even though you have the concept of a vehicle, it can live within different subdomains and mean completely different things to those people that use those systems, again, depending on their context. To me, defining boundaries are probably the most important thing to do, yet the hardest thing to do. And my analogy is you go into a very dark room and all you have is a little flashlight, 
that you're pointing around, you're seeing how high the ceilings are, where the corners are. And as you do it more and more, you started from not having any idea what the room looked like to more and more idea and some visual in your head of what that room looks like. That's what you need to do when exploring a domain. It has to me more value and you need to be doing this first before you even care about the building blocks of things like aggregates. So I do think the tactical patterns like value objects, entities, and aggregates. I created a video on aggregates about being consistency boundaries. There's the key word boundary again, are really useful. But to me, again, going at a higher level to really understand what the problem space is before you get to this level of concerning yourself with aggregates. So here are a few resources that I think you should check out. I'll have links in the description. And the first is a bounded context canvas. So this is a tool for designing and documenting a single bounded context. For context mapping, there's this repo that has kind of a cheat sheet of all the different context mapping patterns, and as well as a starter kit for Miro, which is a online whiteboard, so you can get started creating your own context maps. Lastly, I have to mention event storming. If you're familiar with DDD at all, you've probably heard of it. So check out any of the talks by Alberto Brandolini on event storming. They're well worth your time to watch them. So if you're asking the question, am I doing DDD? Well, my answer is yes. If you're understanding and then modeling the domain, my answer is no, is if you're not doing that and you're concerned with just the tactical patterns of value objects and entities, while those patterns like aggregates have a lot of value, they do, I'm not saying disregard them. However, I think you need to be understanding a little bit more about what that domain is, the language behind it, before you can even go down that road to be using those tools to model your domain. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And as always, please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.